Uh, between uh, April 1st and November 1st uh, each year, I try to go down to the Westland Slalom Course and, uh, and, and water ski. Uh, the course uh, has six buoys, and it takes about 30 seconds to go down. So you ski down, and, you got, and the boat stops. And then you get ready to go again, you come back. Well, one day before they put the course in, which is often the beginning of April, we, the course was not in, so we just skied open ski and went out. And then rather than doing the usual six cuts and stopping, I went probably, I don't know, 30 cuts. When I was done, I was just gassed, uh, totally wasted. I couldn't go anymore if I wanted to. Have you ever had a time like that when you were too tired to go on? Too worn out from work or school or athletic pursuit or music or whatever it was, uh, stop and turn to somebody in your group about that time. So David had a time when 200 of his men were too tired to go on. Let me read you the story. Uh, let me give you a little background. So uh, David has been running from Saul as a fugitive in the Dead Sea uh, desert area. He, they have to keep on the run all the time. And uh, finally, David gets, says, this is crazy. Saul's going to catch me. Let's move to Gath. Well, Gath is an area in the middle of the Philistines. It's where Goliath came from. So they're moving to a foreign country. They're moving to a land of idols and immorality that's, you know, really bad. Uh, but there, the king uh, gave them a, a city, Ziklag, and uh, that's where they stayed. Well, during the days, David and his 600 men, soldiers, would raid various cities. These were cities that Joshua had been commanded to drive out of the land of Canaan uh, 1400 years, or 400 years earlier. Uh, but he had been uh, unable to dislodge them. So David was picking up where Joshua left off and... Uh, driving out these people. Well, one day when they got back from uh, their uh, being out in, from the battle, this is what happened. David and his men reached Ziklag. This is their new home in, Philist in the Philistines. On the third day, now the Amalekites, Amalekites were one of the uh, cities they had raided, had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. That's a lot of tears. Uh, they totally cried out for their families. Um, so uh, things got worse for David. He not only lost his family, David's two wives had been captured, Ahinoam and Abigail. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. They blamed David. David is the one that decided they should raid towns around that area, and, and one of those uh, responded by raiding their town. David is the one who thought they should go off to fight against Israel, and so they'd been gone, left their women uh, unattended, unguarded, and so they want to stone him. So what did David do? David found strength in the Lord his God. Uh, David turned to God. Uh, then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David and the 600 men with him came to the Bezor Valley where they some stay behind. 200 of the men were too exhausted to cross the valley, but David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. How tired do you have to be to give up your pursuit to go rescue your wife and children? That's how tired these people were. The church today has people like that. There are people in church that are just worn out, worn out from a divorce, a bankruptcy, troubles at home, struggles at work, struggles in school. Uh, they just want to come and sit. They don't want to get active serving or doing this or that. Uh, what does the church do with them? 
Well, come with me this Sunday as we talk about that. Uh, I think we're going to be surprised by what David did with these 200 men. And uh, I think you'll be delighted too. Have a great study. I hope you have fun meeting with each other. Pray for each other. And I'll see you Sunday, hopefully.